The G.I. Joe A Real American Hero toy line was as much about the vehicles as it was the iconic characters. And from 1982 to 1994, some truly legendary toys were created, featuring all manner of military hardware, from boats and helicopters to tanks and planes. The designs of many of these vehicles were based on real-world military technology that was massaged to make them appear cutting edge, and the abundance of different toy vehicles offered by Hasbro gave a depth to this line that has rarely been matched. These vehicles were so cool they had their own code names, just like the action figures. In this video we'll only be covering G.I. Joe vehicles, so before anyone jumps in the comments and says, what about the Rattler, rest assured we will be doing a video list of the best Cobra vehicles sometime in the future. So stay tuned as we count down the top 10 best G.I. Joe A Real American Hero vehicles. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel, where we're obsessed with bringing you the true history of vintage toys and action figures and kicking us off in the number 10 slot is the Havoc. This could be the most controversial pick on the list because many collectors think the design of the Havoc is a bit goofy, with this unprotected gunner's chair sitting atop the cab. Yet these top 10 lists are all subjective, and I'm probably swayed by my fond memories of having played with the Havoc in childhood. Driven by the G.I. Joe codename Cross Country, the Havoc is a large tracked armoured vehicle capable of carrying multiple Joes, and it is bristling with weaponry. While not very realistic, the Havoc is a chunky, robust vehicle that can get G.I. Joe to the front line of any battle. The main reason the Havoc made its way onto this list is because it's actually two vehicles in one, with the small reconnaissance craft capable of being deployed from the rear of the Havoc and piloted by a single G.I. Joe figure. Taking the number 9 slot on this list is the Dragonfly. This G.I. Joe assault copter is based on the real-world Bell AH-1 Cobra attack helicopter, and it features a sleek design and an assortment of armaments, including missiles, bombs and cannons. The Dragonfly is piloted by Wild Bill, a G.I. Joe character who is instantly recognisable due to his wide-brimmed cavalry hat. When commanding the Dragonfly, there is space in the cockpit for another Joe to be seated behind Wild Bill, and this airframe also includes a working winch for hauling cargo and functioning rotor blades that can be operated at the push of a button. The Dragonfly was the first G.I. Joe helicopter and featured heavily in the Sumbo animated cartoon, and it remains a must-have piece for any vintage G.I. Joe toy collection. Coming in at number 8 is the Ore Striker. While I certainly do have a lot of love for the Joe's first Jeep, the Ore Striker trumps the vamp for me due to its high-speed, low-drag modern design. AWE stands for All Weather and Environment Vehicle, and the Ore Striker resembles a dune buggy of sorts, with steerable front wheels and working suspension. The driver of the vehicle is codenamed Crankcase, and he features a very nice understated design, and is equipped with a rifle and helmet. When driving the Ore Striker, Crankcase can repel a Cobra attack using the top-mounted laser cannon, but the most fun feature for me is the removable engine that is located at the rear of the vehicle. Number 7 on the list of the best G.I. Joe vehicles is the Mauler. The Mauler MBT was the second tank to be issued to the G.I. Joe team, and it is a major upgrade over the original Mobat. This toy also makes for a fantastic display centerpiece, that is, if you can find one complete, because the Mauler comes with many easy to lose and easy to break parts, such as the smoke grenade launchers, the mud flaps, the antennas, and the tow rope. The Mauler is driven by heavy metal, and this Joe is afforded a lot of protection when situated inside the enclosed driver's hatch. The turret of the Mauler traverses and the gun barrel elevates, and there are positions on the side of the turret where extra Joes can hitch a ride. By far the most fun aspect of this toy is the battery-powered motor that allows the Mauler to be driven around the battlefield at a slow or fast speed. While difficult to find complete today, the Mauler manned battle tank is brimming with intricate detail, making it a highly desired piece for many vintage G.I. Joe collectors. At number 6 on our list is the Rapid Fire Motorcycle. One of the smallest and simplest vehicles in the entire G.I. Joe line, the Ram Cycle is worthy of addition to this list because it's so iconic. Being a lower price point toy meant that almost everyone who was into G.I. Joe in 1982 had one of these in their collection, and aside from a pair of easily lost saddlebags, this vehicle is quite simple to acquire today. The Ram is a high-speed motorcycle with a side-mounted Gatling cannon, and while I didn't have this toy in childhood, I did own the recoloured UK variant for the Action Force line that also came with a recoloured Scarlet action figure who was renamed as Quarrel. While compact and simple, the Ram is a ton of fun to play with, making it highly deserving of the number 6 slot on this list. Coming in at number 5 is the Snowcat. This is the second Arctic Warfare vehicle the Joes were offered after 1983's Polar Battle Bear, and the Snowcat is considerably larger than its predecessor. 
The Snowcat is a half-track vehicle that has been designed to maneuver through blizzards and across glaciers, to track Cobra in the snowiest regions in the world. The Snowcat is driven by Frostbite, and this G.I. Joe comes with one of my favourite weapon accessories, the M16 with Starlight Scope. Frostbite can be situated behind the clear canopy, with the cockpit offering seating for two G.I. Joe figures. In terms of armaments, the Snowcat features a rear-mounted missile rack with four missiles, and two torpedoes mounted on skis. I think what I like most about the Snowcat, aside from its rugged design, is the black and white arctic colour scheme that really makes it stand out on a display shelf. G.I. Joe Snowcat holds 10 Joes and it's got a missile rack and torpedo skis. G.I. Joe! Cobra's on the run! Yo, let's go! G.I. Joe Snowcat, other Joe and Cobra figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro. And at number four, we have the G.I. Joe Amphibious Personnel Carrier. First released in 1983, the G.I. Joe Personnel Carrier, or APC for short, was one of the most versatile toy vehicles in the range. It was durable enough to withstand immensely rugged play and could carry so many G.I. Joe figures that it performed double duty as an action figure carrying case. This early G.I. Joe vehicle came in a number of variants including a very rare mail away version that was all green, but the one I have in my collection is the Superior UK edition, the Action Force Armoured Troop Carrier. The ATC features a gorgeous green and black camouflage pattern and the Palatoy company created some excellent upgrades for the British version, including a missile rack on the turret and a redesigned interior that even includes a medical bay with stretcher. Yet whichever version you own, you can't go wrong with the G.I. Joe APC. As we get closer to the top slot, the number three entry is the legendary Tomahawk. Where the Dragonfly was an assault copter with a very limited troop carrying capability, the G.I. Joe Tomahawk released in 1986 was a dual rotor heavy cargo helicopter that had the ability to transport up to seven Joes into almost any landing zone. The Tomahawk features an opening cargo door at the rear and a working winch on the underbelly, yet this isn't simply a transport helicopter, as the Tomahawk has enough missiles and bombs to launch a formidable attack on Cobra, and a movable chin gun that can be fired in almost any direction. The troop seats are removable to allow for extra cargo to be hauled, and there are also two door guns mounted here, so the Joes can cover a hot LZ. The Tomahawk is flown by lift ticket, and he can pilot this airframe from behind an opening cockpit canopy that has room for two Joes. Incredibly well detailed with a gorgeous camouflage paint scheme, the Tomahawk is a stunning toy and one of the last realistic vehicles to be issued to G.I. Joe in the 1980s. Taking the number two slot on this list is the Sky Striker. At the time of its release, the Sky Striker XP-14F combat jet was the largest G.I. Joe vehicle available in the line, and it is just as iconic to the brand as the characters of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow are. The Sky Striker is an upgraded version of the US military's F-14 Tomcat, and it is heavily armed, with a mind-boggling array of different missiles and bombs carried beneath the fuselage. The wings of this combat jet can be swept back by activating a lever, and this function also raises and lowers the landing gear. There is room in the cockpit for the pilot ace and a navigator, and should a mission go awry, they can eject to safety with the parachutes attached to their seats. The Sky Striker combat jets were so important to the G.I. Joe team that they were the very first thing we saw in the opening of the original Sumbo cartoon, and they are thoroughly deserving of the number two slot on this list. Before we reveal our top pick, I want to explain why the USS Flag aircraft carrier didn't make it onto this list. And that's because even though the flag is technically a vehicle, the toy version was so enormous and unmovable, it's really more of a playset. And as such, it earned the number three spot on our top 10 best vintage playsets video, so I'm okay with it being on that list and being excluded from this one. So coming in at number one is the best G.I. Joe A Real American Hero vehicle ever made, the Killer Whale. Released in 1984, the Killer Whale, or Warrior Hovering Assault Launching Envoy, is a large hovercraft vehicle capable of carrying scores of G.I. Joe troops. While the main body of the whale is very robust, it is quite challenging to find one complete today due to so many of the smaller parts being easily lost or broken. This hovercraft is commanded by the US Coast Guard codenamed Cutter, and this figure has a very nice sculpt and a striking colour scheme. Cutter pilots the whale from the command console that has enough space for two G.I. Joes, and two more troops can be situated in the twin crow's nest machine gun turrets. When you lower the loading ramp and open the troop compartment door, you can deploy a squad of Joes onto the beach, where they can be supported by the killer whale's heavy armaments, 
which include a pair of 105mm pounder cannons and twin missile launchers that carry four missiles each. This hovercraft toy can float on water, and to defend against a submersible attack, the whale can launch up to five depth charges. If you lower the ramp at the bow of the whale, you can also deploy the one-man recon sled, and this is a really fun feature because the launch device is actually spring-loaded. This sled isn't the only recon vehicle that the killer whale is equipped with, with this hovercraft also including a lightweight surveillance cycle that can be stowed at the rear when not in use. Finally, we have the two large propellers that power the craft, and these can be spun at the push of a button. One of the coolest aspects of the G.I. Joe killer whale is that it can be used on both water and land, and Hasbro wisely incorporated some wheels to facilitate movement across the beach. So this vehicle is both a boat and an armoured personnel carrier. And that's really cool. Brimming with exciting play features, the Killer Whale is the Millennium Falcon of the G.I. Joe toy line. A vehicle so large that your figures can have adventures on the hovercraft without ever needing to leave the confines of the hull, making it the best G.I. Joe vehicle ever created. So that's our top 10 best vintage G.I. Joe vehicles. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to check out some of our other top 10 lists, you can click the links up here, or subscribe to the channel by clicking here, or consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get access to hours of exclusive content. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and yo Joe!